Back in the 60s, a teen idol who later acquired the title The Polish Prince hit the top 40 an amazing 29 times, scoring four number one hits in the process. But these days, his career has turned from pop to polka. My update on Bobby Vinton is coming up. The hits from coast to coast. American Top 40. Now our AT40 special by the singing star who once took a pretty wild risk to get his start in the business. But he was lucky. The gamble paid off. It happened in New York City. He'd been making the rounds of the record companies trying to get signed and recorded. But none of them would spend the big money for a recording session on an unproved talent. So here's what he did. He rented a big studio, hired 25 musicians with a conductor, all on credit, of course, and made his record. Then, without dismissing the musicians, he picked up the phone and called a top executive that he knew at one of the record companies he'd been trying to sign with and told him he just had to hear the fantastic record he'd just cut. Well, out of both curiosity and professional interest, the man rushed over, listened to the record, and was really impressed with it. And he asked the singer who he'd signed with. The singer said, with you. The man looked at the 25 musicians plus the conductor and said, wait a minute, who's paying for this session? The singer said, you are. There was dead silence. And for a few seconds, our boy didn't know whether it was going to be jail or fame and fortune. Well, he lucked out. The man smiled, stuck out his hand, and said, It's a deal. Partly because he admired the singer's nerve, but mainly because he recognized talent. That particular record didn't make it. But that singer went on to four number ones in his career so far. Here's one of them from 1964. There, I've said it again. Bobby Vinton. I love you. American Top 40. This is Casey on American Top 40. And now the current hit by the singing star whose career was turned around from miserable failure to fantastic success by a song that Tony Bennett and Andy Williams both had refused to record. The young man from Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, had started recording for Epic Records back in the early 60s. Now, the first couple of sides that he cut didn't make it. Neither did the next couple, or the two after that. And when the total number of songs he had recorded reached 10, and all had been complete bombs, they called him in to tell him they were dropping him from the label. And as the executives were making their polite farewell speech, the young singer's eye fell on a stack of sheet music, songs that had been rejected by other singers. He picked one up, started to hum a few bars, and then said to the record people, Hey, this is a great song. I want to record it. And they said, Now, wait a minute. That song's already been turned down by Tony Bennett and Annie Williams, and besides, that's not why we called you in here. Well, it took some pretty fancy selling, but finally the singer persuaded the executives to give him one more chance. After ten bombs, his last chance. Well, obviously, the song made it, or I wouldn't have a story here to tell. In fact, it made number one. The song that two big stars had turned down rescued and launched the career of one of the biggest stars of the 60s. That song was Roses Are Red. His latest hit is at number 25 again this week. Here's Bobby Vinton. Every day of my life Second week at number 25, Bobby Vinton, Every Day of My Life. And the countdown rolls on. The hits from coast to coast. American Top 40. Well, now on American Top 40, I have the current hit by one of America's biggest recording artists who became famous for not being famous back in the 60s. Life magazine carried a 10-page story on him back in 1965, and the title was, and I quote, he's at the top of the charts and his records sell like there's no tomorrow. So, who is he? The point of the article was that average Americans had never heard of this singer who had sold 11 million records in four years. Or, if they had heard of him, they couldn't remember his name. He once told an interviewer, and we quote again, whenever I tell someone I'm the biggest seller of single records in the country, and I do tell them, I can see their thinking, who are you? It's just amazing how much money I have in the bank to be so unknown, end of quote. Well, his last top 40 hit came in 1972, and that was sealed with a kiss. And he's back on the charts this week, moving up forward to number 17. With My Melody of Love, here's Bobby Vinton. Who? I'm looking for a miracle.
if you were listening to the radio back in 1962, you might remember a giant smash called Roses Are Red. That song was the first number one hit for one of the biggest teen idols of the 60s, Bobby Vinton. In fact, not only was it Bobby's first number one hit, it was also his first chart record. Over the next decade, Bobby went on to hit the top 40 with 28 more singles, including three more number ones. There was Blue Velvet in 1963, and there was There I've Said It Again and Mr. Lonely in 1964. Bobby continued to hit well into the 70s, and even hosted his own TV variety show for a couple of years. Now here's my update on Bobby Vinton. He's been performing regularly in Las Vegas nightclubs and continuing to appear on TV variety shows, still singing his big hits. But Bobby's career has taken another turn, too. Earlier this year, he started his own label, Tapestry Records. And just last summer, Tapestry Records released its first single. It's a tip of Bobby's hat to his Polish roots, a heavy beat version of the old Pennsylvania polka called Disco Polka. As far as we know, the first time the polkas ever met the disco beat. And that's my update on Bobby Vinton, still an innovator, 18 years after his first big hit. And the countdown continues. Casey is coming.